Hello everyone. Um, if you are a bookmaker on the hardest list, this is something that you will receive if you request it. Um, it's kind of on, in our basic line too, but not everybody needs it. So we do ask that if you want one, you request it. This is our book binding kit that we find on Amazon and have shipped directly to you. In this kit, there is the bone folders. There's this one, which is probably the most used and um, most people have something like this when they think of bone folder. And then there's this one, which has the fine little edge for creasing and things like that here. You can get to a point if you need to. It comes with these little snippers which should be really easy to figure out how to use. You just pull off the lid and then you can use them for snip and thread. Now I wouldn't want to go cutting any fabric with this because it would take you forever. But they should be really good for that. It comes with three different colors of waxed linen, which I think is really amazing. We have the brown, the black, and the tan. It comes with its very own baby awl. Um, I have used for, for a long time, I just used my jewelry awl because that's what I have and I have a lot of them because I've taught bookbinding classes. But this one is really cool. I like it. I like that you can get up to a big hole if you need to and some things. It's got a little protective plastic straw-like thing on there and it's, it's sharp and it would you know, if you put enough force behind it, yes, you're going to poke right through you. But I like the feel in your hand. It's not big and obnoxious. And then it comes with this. Two more things. I'll put the box out of the way. It comes with this little thing. And it took me a while to figure out what this is. It's a thimble. But it is adjustable. As you can see. And it will go anywhere that you need it to be to help you push the needle through. Now whatever you do, make sure that your adjustable part isn't where you're pushing the needle because you could easily slip and still poke in it in your finger or something. And then it comes with the little test tube and one, two, three, four, five, six needles. All different sizes. I don't know if you can really see them on there. Nope. Let's see if this helps. A little bit. That's the littlest. And then there's this one. They're both pretty much the same. This one does feel, one feels a little thinner than the other. And then they start getting bigger. And these two are close, and I would probably guess they are the same, but they do. One seems to look a little thicker. These two are the same, and these two are the same. Now, these are fairly sharp. The bigger ones are a little less sharp than, this, than these are, but only because of their size. So I'm going to do a demo on how to use all of this. I'm going to put all of these back in. I'm going to use a small one. I would always go for the big one because that's just what's easy for me. But I want to do the small one because I just want to see how it works. I'm going to use this black thread because you can see it better. And find the end. I just kind of rub this until um, one of the wraps becomes loose and it usually will get you to an end. It is waxed so it's kind of well stuck on itself. And maybe I'm not going the right direction with that one. Hmm. Let's go the other way. There we go. Oh, I knew it was there. So, because I tend to use what's handy, I have these cute little greeting cards that I got in 
Curly Tees auction sitting right here. And so I'm going to turn these into a little booklet. And I'm just going to put them, the three of them together in one signature. And I have this little booklet now. Well, I need to sew them together. So this size, you can usually just do two holes and it's good. But since I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and do the three hole pamphlet because um, that's the one most everyone uses. So I usually go like this, like an inch of each side, and then I double it. And I'm going to use the little snippers. And I'm going to give myself a little because I just rather have more than I need and just a little snip put the lid back on them so I don't catch them on something else and now I'm going to thread my needle now because this is wax there's several ways you can do this you can put your needle here fold it over smash it down and it'll kind of be good on itself and probably go in there I'm using the small one so you can see the struggle of getting it in there Okay, this is how I do wax thread. I lay it down and I can take the bone folder. I can take this, your fingernail, the needle you can do it with, but the needle is short, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to smash it. But you can kind of see how flared out that is and it is smashed. And then I'm going to take my needle because it's already nice and thin it went right in there so that's to me that's worth the whole um, waxed concept okay so um, I use most of the time I use a phone book I do have a book cradle my husband made and I love it but it's in the other room and um, so we're going to use the all now, in a three-stitch pamphlet, most people will find the center, and then they'll measure out this way and this way. I'm going to eyeball it because it's small. And there is no certain specifics on which um, you're spacing or anything. I always try to get my first one in the middle. So I poke. I, mean, I do have a mat here, and I'm going to poke it on in. I went way further than I needed. That's way bigger hole and I'm just going to kind of guess like about right here and just poke it through give it a little twist to help it through see how much smaller that one is and then I'm going to kind of guess this one is so they're so they're sort of even when it's all done it doesn't really show now if you needed to just get real tiny see I have already went through that one it's very hard to see but you can do a tiny hole if you need to I'm going to give it a little more pressure because I want it a little bit bigger so we're going to take our threaded needle you don't need a knot in it we're going to go here's the, here's the only decision you really have to make do you want your tails on the inside of your book or on the outside of the book I would say 50% of the time I do it on the outside, the other 50% on the inside. And it only decides, um, sometimes I want to add some little beads to the, the ends, and then sometimes I just want it to be a book bound and have no ends. So this time I'm going to start with the inside. I'm going to pull it to where I have enough to tie a knot and hold it. And then it doesn't matter if you go to the top or the bottom and you go through <coughs> excuse me and pull it on through keeping it snug now if you're doing multiples and you've got a lot of um, holes that you're doing you pull your thread to tighten in the direction the thread is running okay so we're going to come down here and we're going to go skip the middle one, go all the way back up to the top, pull it snug. Then we're going to go back down to the middle. Okay, now here comes the next hardest part. The, everything you ever see says make sure your needle comes up on this side. 
if it comes up on this side, it's still going to be okay because once you snug it up, you can just take your needle, slide it through so you have one end on either side of the center. Hold them snugly, tie one and two, and you want to pull that second knot as tight as you can get it because the wax makes the threads kind of mingle and become one knot. Now you can do a couple of different things. You can trim this off like this. And see, I have way more thread than I needed. I could have probably done with about half of what I had. But I would rather have the waist and not have to tie a teeny tiny knot. So I left these ends pretty long too. I can leave them long and I could take a little paper punch circle or star or snowflake or, you know, something small and glue one to each side of that. And so it would kind of have bookmarky kind of things. When you do that, I usually do trim them down to where the ends do not stick out of the book because I don't want those little papers sticking out and getting all bent up. But you can also get right down here and cut really close to your threads. So there you go. In just a couple of greeting cards that you had there, you have a book. And look, if you have it, you can stick that in an envelope and send it and have a really cool card thing. So that is our little kit. I did not show how to use the needle. Let's see what I can stitch through. We'll stitch through this because this is kind of heavy. Not the needle, the thimble. So I'm trying to push and I can't get it through. I can use the thimble to help me push. Again, remember, do not go wherever your um, little split part is. And if you are using this in a sewing method, when you're sewing, you can use this on your other hand. So when you, your needle comes down, you can hit it and come back up. So basically, it's a thimble that's not got a top on it. So please en en enjoy your bookbinding kits. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks. Bye-bye.